So, the supply drop, this was when exactly? Right around the time we saw the ceasefire starting to break down. Must be more than a year ago now. So, at that time, your camp was in the center of town? Yeah, things were getting pretty desperate, though. I remember we hadn't been resupplied in months. No food, water, medicine. We were used to issues with logistics, but I don't know, in the end it got so bad U.S. forces prepared an airdrop. Not an easy task, considering, but those crates, they really were life and death. That's why we needed somebody on the ground. Someone to make sure they came down okay. And who was that? A guy named Adams, part of the NATO peacekeeping force. Close friend of mine, actually. Adams, he went out alone? From the way he told it, he may as well have. No, he went along with some new recruits, local bunch. It was his job to show them the ropes. Something I'm not quite clear on. Why didn't IDAP transport the aid themselves? There must have been a reason. Yeah, there was. A couple of weeks previously, guerrillas had ambushed a convoy. It was some dissident group out to sabotage the peace talks in Karbala. Anyway, NATO intervened and the whole thing just blew up. A checkpoint was hit. Protesters were fired upon at the MOD. Yes, I, I, we were there. AAN. Then you know how bad it got. Our movements were limited by the government. Exactly. And convincing anybody to reassign troops, to escort NGOs, just a total non-starter. Big heart, pissed off with everyone, everything, all the time. And he always seemed to know where to find a beer, and was always willing to share it. A ways up the road from our encampment, there was a small farmstead. As far as drop zones went, it was as good a spot as any. Mentioned something about the breakdown of peace talks, the situation blowing up. What happened there, from your perspective? Well, for one thing, the change in the peacekeeping mandate came out of the blue. We heard the pressure came down the pipe from CSAC. They had the leverage. You mean it was in their interest to kick NATO off the mainland? Maybe. Certainly the government had become frustrated with NATO and vice versa. I suppose they blame NATO for their, what, more sympathetic approach. Hearts and minds, Adams used to tell me. But the others said they just didn't have the guts for it. Couldn't do what needed to be done. Once he'd called in the airdrop, that was it. They just had to sit tight, hope for the best. One thing I don't understand, what were they doing there, all the way up in the mountains? The town, Oreo Castro, 
This place has historic ties with the guerrillas. For years, people here would provide them with food, water. I see. The government responded by draining the swamp. And that involved sending soldiers? Yeah, coin ops. Adams and his guys were there to remind him of their R2P. Just a sec. I'm getting a bit lost in the lingo here. Hmm? Oh, gotcha. Uh, R2P is their responsibility to protect. Counterinsurgency can get real messy real quick. He was in charge of training. Laws of armed conflict, that kind of thing. Adams normally tossed out an orange smoke grenade, which marked his position for the pilot. medicine, another fresh drinking water, the rest were packed with rice or grain. Adams had to inspect each one individually. Later, we'd arrange collection. Thankfully, the rice seemed okay. It wasn't uncommon for the sacks of grain to split on impact, but that time, we got lucky. He didn't lose a single one. items, you can imagine how pleased we were to see those arrive. So they landed safely? Yeah. Yeah, they were fine. As I recall, the bottles of purified water were fine. We'd been waiting on those for weeks. As for the crates, they still needed to be checked before anyone else arrived.
Report in. Over. On the move. Sprint zero, five, zero, two, zero, eight. On your feet! One hundred meters front. Front. The gorillas attacked. Yeah, from what I heard, it was pretty intense. I don't have the numbers, but maybe six or seven were killed. And what happened when the supplies had been secured? Adams would fire a flare. Back at the camp, of course, we'd heard all the gunfire, but that flare, when we spotted it, I don't know, it felt like finding a moment of hope or something. For sure. I can only imagine. And thanks for sharing. It puts a, I don't know, a human perspective on my work. Speaking of which, your friend, do you think he'd be willing to contribute further? Even, you know, off the record, what with the topic of my article, having an expert, an instructor on the laws of war. It... Look. I'm sorry. I, I know he'd help out however he could, but listen, he died on Stratus a year and a bit later. Landmine.